Moderna's vaccine, if I can speak today, Moderna's vaccine was created with the help of biotech company Ginkgo Bioworks. We're joined now by the CEO and co-founder, Dr. Jason Kelly. So doctor, I'm hoping you can kind of do the impossible. This is TV. We unfortunately don't have a full hour. I know this is all very complicated, but I'm hoping you can simply explain uh, Ginkgo's role in the production of the Moderna vaccine. Yeah, so I'll give you a little primer on on nucleic acid vaccines, real quick, right? So, so these vaccines, both Moderna and Pfizer's, are RNA vaccines, right? And that means that you're getting RNA delivered to your cells. They're going to read that RNA, produce a protein. It's going to set off your immune system. And what's great is you can develop those really fast. It's the fastest vaccines have ever been developed in history. What's tough about it is. They're brand new class of vaccines. We've never manufactured these things at the, certainly not at the billions of vaccine doses scale we're going to need. And so what Ginkgo has been doing, we, we had a chance to work with Moderna starting back in April uh, and also working with a couple other nucleic acid vaccine companies to optimize that manufacturing process. H how do you make it so that you get more doses per tank and also uh, so that you don't run out of any of the critical reagents that you would need in that process. Uh, and that's where really we've been focused on. Now that these vaccines work, how do you optimize uh, the manufacturing process to get as many as you, as you can quickly? All right, so now that everyone has that very quick biology lesson, uh, wondering now, we have more than 300 people in this country, and we now have this Moderna vaccine candidate, we have the Pfizer vaccine candidate, what do you see as some of the biggest challenges? I know you were talking about essentially creating this vaccine. What do you see as some of the biggest challenges to roll it out to over 300 million people? Yeah, I mean, I think figuring out the manufacturing is going to be a big piece of this. Um, so, so there's a couple steps. So in the first step, you basically are growing up almost like in a brewery, cells that produce a piece of DNA. And then you're going to, in a lab, add enzymes to that that turn that DNA into RNA. Well, both of those steps, we need to make sure we have enough enzymes and we need to make sure we get as many doses uh, out per tank. Uh, and, and I mean, what's exciting about this from my standpoint is I think we're, we're in a very dark tunnel, uh, but there is the first light at the end of it now with these two vaccines. And the sooner we get there, the sooner the whole economy turns back on in the United States and internationally, we could not invest enough in speeding the manufacture of these products now that we know they're safe and efficacious. It, it should be, and people have been already on a crash program, we should double or triple that coming up. And I, and I think you will see that uh, with the United States and other governments. So realistically, if you had to put a timeline on it, how long before everyone, at least in the United States, is inoculated? Yeah, I mean, I think Dr. Fauci was suggesting, you know, uh, April as, as sort of an optimistic target where this would be widely available. I don't think you'll see everyone vaccinated till, uh, you know, late next year if we're lucky. Um, and, but I think it's also worth keeping in mind, you know, our economy is also dependent on the economies of the world, right? And so there's nearly 8 billion people that are ultimately going to need this vaccine. Uh, and these RNA vaccines, I think, are a good opportunity to really build that level of scale. So hopefully we also see that that international investment at the same time and we get out of this thing uh, collectively. I'm really glad you mentioned that, uh, because when I was reading about this, what seemed the most interesting to me is essentially how differently uh, the United States is doing it, uh, it when it comes to this coronavirus vaccine compared to the way we traditionally make vaccines, the way we traditionally roll out treatments for diseases, other infectious diseases or things like cancer. So I want to put this to you. Do you see the way that we approach uh, either how fast or even how we make vaccines in the future, treatments in the future. Do you see that changing in a post-pandemic world? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. Th th this is the new normal as far as I'm concerned. I think th this is how we should treat uh, and respond to an emerging infectious disease. I think these nucleic acid vaccines can be developed fast. I think you will see global build out of manufacturing, so which means we can quickly ramp them if we need them in a future pandemic or even uh, a regional outbreak. Uh, and we've now seen how fast you can get through uh, a clinical trial uh, when, when, in, when the pressure's on. And, and so I do think there is a, a real opportunity for us to say this is just how we respond to infectious disease in the future. Uh, because frankly, if you look internationally, the impact of infectious disease is still just overwhelming. Uh, and I think the tools that are being built to respond to COVID are going to be redeployed. Uh, and, and nucleic acid vaccines are one of the best tools in that toolbox. 
So to that end, do you perhaps think that we'll be starting to see and hear headlines uh, going forward? Like, hey, we have a cure for cancer. You know, we were able to come up with it very quickly. I know about that. <laughs> These tools. We're, I'm just wondering, like, yeah. how optimistic should we be in this post-pandemic world that the tools we've been given yeah. because of the coronavirus vaccine or the coronavirus pandemic really are enabling us to really tackle a lot of diseases and, and viruses that so far we've been lagging behind in because of all of the layers of bureaucracy? I, I think you will see it uh, for for vaccines in particular. I, I do think this is going to be a, a sea change in how those are developed. I think that once the manufacturing is online at large scale for nucleic acid vaccines, I think they'll be the new standard for many types of future uh, diseases that can be treated with vaccines. That's not every disease, right? That's probably not cancer, but uh, it is a lot of your infectious diseases. And so I, I and frankly, this is a chance we, we should have done this a long time ago. Right. You know, there, there's there's uh, there's more virus protection on your email inbox than you. Right. At the moment, you know, our, our how we've approached infectious disease uh, systematically, I, I think I think we could have done a better job. And, and we're sort of facing the consequences of that lack of investment as, as we've been knocked on our butts by this pandemic. But I, I think we will we will build now such that that we have that infrastructure and it will be redeployed, I think, to get infectious disease under control worldwide post pandemic.